Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're tuning in to another edition of the Sports Shop 27. I'm your host, Jermaine That's Coulter. Right. And to your far right, we got Kevin Johnson, KJ. And in the middle, today's right. special guest, former All-ACC Clemson defensive back, right. and former Dallas Cowboy, <laughs> former Indianapolis Colts, former Redskins, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Hamlin. What's good, like baby? What's up? What's, What's up, man? <laughs> What's going on, fellas? What's going yeah, on? Man. Appreciate so, you having me. much, not much. Glad to have you on the show, Mike. Glad to have you on the show. For the people that don't know you, uh, let them know uh, where you're from and a little bit about your background. That's right. Oh, man, I'm from the great city of Lamar, uh, which is a small town. Uh, LeVon Kirkland is from there. Uh, we had a couple. We went to Wayne Point a School. My graduating class is only 66 people. Um, but we had six of us make it in the league. So um, we were basically a football town. Um, okay. What's born up? and raised there. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> so growing up, who was some of your inspiration? Was it like LeVon Kirkland and people from your area or just people you watched on TV? What made you like football? Ah, uh, man, LeVon. Levon, uh, Levon was the guy that everybody wanted to be growing up. Okay, um, so I got to give my hats to him. I know I give him a hard time about me being the greatest from Lamar, but uh, I got to give it to him. He's, he's he's number one. That's what's, what's up. up, man. That's what's up. Big shout out, Levon. Go ahead, KJ. Yeah. yeah. So, so what age you started playing football, man? Uh funny story. Uh, I've been playing football all my life. Um, but when I got to the middle school, that's when it kind of, I kind of slowed down. So after my eighth grade year, I used to go to the varsity games. And uh, I was like, I'm not big enough to play football. Like, this is not for me. So, yeah. I, <laughs> so I joined the band. Uh, my father gave me a hard time what? about it. And uh, yeah, I actually How was joined that, the band. Man? I'm a drummer. <laughs> I'm okay. Right. Drum okay. Line, What's up? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I didn't go out like that though. My all my friends, all them boys played. So I was like, you know what? Just let me just let me suck it up and just do it. And um I guess Coach Boyd pushed me to the limit. Uh, he got the best out of me in my freshman year and I kind of fell in love uh love with it from there. That's what's up, man. Cool. Cool, man. You play any other sports other than football starting out? Oh man, I play football, baseball, and basketball. Um Basketball is my love, to be with you. That was the okay. sport I always went hard in. I played it day in, day out. Um, football was something I fell back yeah. home. And baseball, everybody said I was the best in, so but I wasn't I wasn't in love with it. Oh man. What position you play in <laughs> baseball? Shortstop. Oh, oh okay. You got a gun, you played in the hole. <laughs> yeah. You pick you yeah, pretty pitch your much, skills? man. Yeah. Oh yeah, I pitched a little bit. Um, I started varsity since eighth grade, so I played third my eighth year, and uh, shortstop from there. Okay, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah. So you played yeah. baseball. Go ahead, KJ. You got a question for him? Yeah, yeah. So, so when you started off playing football, did you start off with safety or did you start off with another position? I was always safety. I was always a safety. Uh, playing a little league, they had me a running back, receiver, and safety or whatever. But I was always a safety. My dad, my dad played safety, so it's just in my blood. Okay, cool. So, so what, you, what you like about safety? What you uh, to run them down, stuff like that? Uh, I, I, I used to play safety I, too, man. Yeah, I have I have a motto, man. It's better it's better me hitting you than you hitting me. Um, at the end of the day, it's gonna be me or you. Somebody got to get hit, so I'd rather do the hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you got you got to keep your eye on that quarterback, man. You know when you're at that yeah, safety spot, yeah, yeah. For real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sneaky, so that, that was the easy part. So, so you made sure you back that up. You baiting them, huh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. You gotta be, you gotta be the quarterback on defense. So I just pride myself on knowing what a quarterback right. do before he do it. Cool. Man. Hey, you ever try some of that corner spot though? You ain't never go to the corner just to play around with it. <sighs> I did, I did, but you got to be a different breed for that. I think I was a little, hey, a little man. too slow. For Tell them, man. Too slow. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> yeah, the island, hey. the island is different, man. The island is different. 
the island yeah. to me in comparison to safety is uh, a running back breaking free and it's just you in the middle of the field. But on the island, it's you and the civil every snap. So you just got to be on your P's and Q's. You got to be on your P's and Q's. Yeah, don't get beat yeah. deep, baby. <laughs> Everybody see you. Don't yeah. get beat For deep. <laughs> don't get beat <laughs> deep. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah. So starting out, and when you went to high school and you played safety, uh, what type of defense did y'all play? And what type of packages did y'all play at Lamar? Um, it was always cover three. Um, everybody in the box. Damn. We had one safety, uh, two corners. That's it. Put everybody in the box. If you're going to beat us, you got to throw the ball. And nobody ain't going to want to throw the ball on it. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was aggressive in the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah, yeah. So, hey, very. So your brother your brother played with you in high school too, right, man? I, I love it. I had a brother to play with me in high school, man. That's just like me. Boy, we'd be nasty. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, so what's crazy is I played with uh I played with both of my brothers actually. Well, my baby brother, my senior was his name very right yet. So when he came up, he actually broke his collarbone, I wanna say, uh, at the beginning of the football season. So I didn't get a chance to play with him. He was on the team, but he wasn't really playing. Um but my big brother my middle brother, he played corner while I was at safety. So it was just fun playing with him. Uh we just just like backyard ball basically. And hey, hey, you also threw a touchdown pass to him, right? Like to my brother, yep, to my brother. Uh, it was, well, I I was lit, in the baby. state championship game. I had a messed up wow. shoulder, uh, and coach, it was like a reverse pass play. It was fourth and twenty nine on the thirty yard line. <laughs> on the thirty, Whoa. so I did a reverse. I don't know why they bit up on it, but I just saw him and let it go. Yeah, got him, baby. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. The whole so, stadium was rocking. We're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That's yes, sir. <laughs> so talking about the state championship, who was your rival in your own um, conference back then, and, yeah. and some of the competition, some of the players that y'all played, the type of caliber players, and the um schools that they went to. Ah uh, man, so my rival was actually Timminsville. Uh, we got to the point where we just it wasn't a rival by the time I seen you hit. Um, <laughs> But uh, Lakeview became my rival because we always played him in the championship game. And uh, Anthony Ward has played uh, with Ooh, was my host when I got yeah. to Clemson. And I actually played with him at Clemson. So it was Dang. always uh, a, good little, a good little showdown. Good little showdown, man. He was, uh, he was somebody I looked up to uh, coming out because they always had a saying when he, on Friday night, like the Wards are still yeah. running. Like he was a standout guy at uh, Lakeview. So... He's uh kudos to him. He's one of the reasons I went to Clemson. Uh him, uh Corey Groove, all them boys. Uh they were like big brothers to me. That's so what's up, man. I appreciate them for bring me in and make basically making me go to <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Hey, so so you go to the Shrine Bowl, anything like that? Oh yeah, played in the Shrine Bowl. Um whew, that Shrine Bowl class was was pretty nice. Um Lawrence Name Timmons was there. It was with. a bunch of guys. Sidney Rice. Ooh, uh, Sydney Rice. Yeah. So Lawrence, we had Sidney, we had uh Robert Ayers, uh Darrell Scott. It was oh man, that list goes yeah. on and you, on. You had uh, bring your game Booty Boo, which y'all probably don't know of. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um but it just it, it it was fun because everybody basically embraced each other and we kept in contact from there. Actually, Sidney Rice tried to get me to go to Carolina with him. He oh, called yeah. me on sign today, like, bro, listen, like, we got to play together. We got to stay together. But I couldn't Damn. do it. I was, I, I was all in. I was all in. Yeah. <laughs> the Tigers, baby. The Tigers got him. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Go Tigers. The... Go Tigers. So, yo, you won the state championship your senior year, correct? Junior and senior. Junior and oh. senior. Two-time state winning yeah. championship. So uh, you you go into the recruiting process and what teams are trying to get you right there besides South Carolina and Clemson? Ooh, and why you chose uh, Clemson? I had I had uh, Duke coming at me, uh, Florida, uh, Virginia Tech, and there were some other schools. But I was to the point where I wasn't leaving out of state. Like I was already I was like, listen, okay. I'm gonna be in Carolina or Clemson. Growing up, I was always a Clemson fan. That's and right, what's okay. crazy is it's gonna sound bad when I say this. What, what's crazy is I've only been to Clemson one time, once, and that was when they played Georgia, my senior year. 
Cage probably was on the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cage yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, so, wait, what year was it? It, was, it had to be 2003. Oh, two. 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 Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, there, yeah, whatever game it was, it was in the Valley. And George beat him. It was hot and miserable. So I was like, you know what? I would never come back down here. Like, I would not come back down here. This is too much. <laughs> so, uh, and Columbia is 45 minutes away. So I'm like, you know what? I just go to Carolina games. Um, but when I took my official visit, it ain't feel right. Like Carolina didn't like I didn't fit in at Carolina, and Clemson oh, yeah. was like a whole different vibe. Everybody embraced me. It was just, it was just family. all love when I got there. So it was that what got me. Uh, that family vibe got me. Yeah. I couldn't look back. I couldn't look back. <laughs> so who yeah. who was the player that embraced yeah. you the most? That showed you around the uh, campus and and took you under their wing when you got to Clemson. Oh, Anthony Waters, him and him and Court Group. Uh, we played them boys okay. while I was there. So when I got there, that was the first thing they said. That's the first thing. That's good, man. That's good. Yep. So you go to Clemson. Um, your freshman year, did you red shirt or did you start straight? Straight, you get on the yeah, field. Yeah, red shirt. They um they told me that it was like you come in, we you're gonna play right away. And so my mindset was, all right, I'm gonna go in. I got to grind. I'm gonna play right away. It wasn't happening. We had Travis Pugh and Jamal Fudd. Like, I was invited to beat them guys out. <laughs> so, uh, it was kind of frustrating at first, but I feel like that was my best year. Um, because, like, mentally, I probably was ready, but physically, I definitely wasn't ready. So, it just gave me a year to get used to college, uh, get used to the routine, and just kind of let me know what I'm getting myself into. So, I, I appreciate that retro, too. Yeah. Were you recruited? Were you recruited by Dabo or Tommy Bowden? Is it, I think it was Tommy Bowden. Uh, so Bowden, yeah, Bowden was my head coach. Uh, Burton Burns was my actual recruiter, okay. um, but it was it was all Bowden. My senior year, T. Billy, what did it do? Uh, my <laughs> senior on, year T. was Billy. when uh, was when that was my teammate to a head hitter. He, he was a head. Yep. He would take a head yep. off. Um, but uh, Dabo became the head coach. Uh, midway through my senior season. Yep. And at that point in time is when nobody knew what was going to happen in the future. So that's where he came up with that slogan, the all-in slogan. He was like, listen, if you don't want to be here, I understand that. Like, it's a whole new, it's a lot going on. So if you know, if you don't want to be here, I understand that. But if you're going to be here, I need for everybody to be all-in. Yeah, that's so right. From, there, from that point on, everybody was just, everybody's all-in from there. Yep. Yeah. So talk so talk about being in the locker room with explosive players like CJ Spiller, uh Ford and uh Davis, uh playing oh, with man. those guys, what it was like, like world class oh, speed. Oh man. Yeah, baby. Thunder and lightning. Oh man, it was fun <laughs> until until they got a deep right on you. Like it was always Ooh. fun because it was smaller guys. Uh yeah. so if they running, you just gotta you just gotta know you gotta take off before they take off. <laughs> Do not you let them catch with you. The- yeah, you run the rock for them, basically. And it, it, it was fun, <laughs> and I got used to it just because, like, it was natural for me just because I went against, went against them every day. So it was like it, it basically came natural, and it slowed the game down for me because you're not going to find nobody that's running like them boys running. Exactly. Going against I was other teams, say. Like, this is what y'all yeah, doing. Yeah. Like, this is easy for me. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they actually made it a whole lot easier for me. Exactly. When it came to Saturday, it was a whole lot easier to guard that oh, back yeah, yeah. out the back. Saturday field. was fun. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, KJ. Because of them. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, KJ. Yeah, yeah. So, so who, who was the hardest quarterback you had to face, you know, for in your, in your, for your whole career? Oh, man. At Clemson. I got to go with Matt Ryan. That's was one person. Matt Ryan? I don't think I ever Maybe. beat. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know. I don't know why though. I don't know why he was just he was just fundamentally sound. Yeah. He always found a way yeah, to he win. The game. Um, he didn't do nothing he crazy. Started. Yeah. He definitely definitely did. Um yeah. and we never beat him, so I gotta give my hats off to him. Cool. That's what's up, yeah. That's what's up. Well I got some highlights for um when Dabo came became the intern head coach. This is your senior season and um basically gonna show some clips from you guys <laughs> uh, playing. Carolina, and you know, you made a, a good play on the interception, okay? All right, man, let's see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take his mic around the world and blast the big ass D and rock the masses. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We just <laughs> watched the beginning of the, the Dabo era. His first Gatorade bath, first win versus the Gamecocks, yeah. uh, provided by mm -hmm. our, our part special that, guest, Michael Hamlin. <laughs> 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 Bless that Dabo with his first Gatorade bath at Clemson. Yeah, you, got it, you got it. You got this at the Sports Shop 27. <laughs> I'm just playing. But uh, yeah, hey. You guys had a good secondary and a good running back core, man. So uh, that was a good season. Uh, he came in and took over and never looked back. Talk about um, playing underneath the Dabo and Tommy Bowden during your time at Clemson. I started with uh, let me start with Tommy because that was my head thing going all the way through. Um, Tommy was a good guy. Uh, Tommy was loyal to his guys, to his players, um, and Tommy kept us. Uh, I guess see, he kept us together. Um, what's yeah. what's crazy is I've never been to uh, any type of homecoming events until until Sweeney took over. Never, yeah. we never did anything with the with, as far as like with the school or the school never basically came to us and did did certain stuff. But when Sweeney became head coach, like he changed all of that. Like he made everybody one basically like it was it was no separation he made everybody one um and i think that was unique uh the tiger walk that was the way for the fans to basically embrace with the players and the players to get all the love that they deserve uh before the game yeah and i, I just think that was uh that was probably the biggest separation or the biggest difference between the two of them okay. both great great coaches both great coaches yeah. that's good man so, so um 
Hey, it's hard to get an interception yeah. sometimes, man, at Clemson. So how you felt when you got your first interception, man? Like, you know, how was that? Oh, man. It felt uh, unreal. My first pick, I never forget it, was against Kevin Johnson. Um, Ooh, and it was, it was a jump ball. The first That's the what I'm talking about. Hey, man, ever. you got hot, so what? Exactly, Ooh. exactly. Um, <laughs> you got to get up. <laughs> was it my first game starting? I started mid-season, so it was like it was close. If it wasn't my first game starting, it was like right before uh, it was in, somewhere in that area. Somewhere but, in there, uh, okay. Yeah, so it was the quarterback was scrambling, and me and him was downfield by ourselves, so he just threw it up. I'm a <laughs> basketball player, so it's it's not easy to just out joint me like that. Or yeah. I, like I, I have good time, and so um, that's my first pick. And what people don't know is I actually fumbled the ball and got it back. Uh, like I, re- I returned <laughs> it, got hit by a lineman. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, hey, them linemen can hit now. Shoot, right back. Hey, exactly. Yeah. They form a D exactly. lineman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Yes. Yeah. So, so was Calvin. So was Calvin Johnson your hardest receiver to guard? They should. Y'all shut them down. Ooh, like Sidney Rice. Yeah, um, right. Your boy uh, <laughs> when a game my sophomore year, my sophomore year against Kevin Johnson, he didn't have a, he didn't catch a pass. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. That's the only game he ever played that he never got a pass in. So he got shut down. Kind of proud myself on that. But Sidney Rice was, <laughs> yeah, Sidney Rice was probably the hardest, um, just because he was smooth. But he was a basketball player, and yeah. he was he was smooth with it. Uh, his raw running was. It wasn't the quickest, it wasn't the best, but it was like efficient. Yeah, so like every movement he had was just smooth. It's kind of hard to see. Like <laughs> as a What's DB and KJ know what I'm talking about. You you when, once I'm not that once break. Sink, uh, he'll sink in and break down, like you already know. But like with him, he was just tall and he was just like he was running right and he was just break. Yeah. So and then he had good hands. So anything that area, anything close to his hands, he's gonna catch. That's right. So, yeah. yeah, that's the hardest. <laughs> So talk and about that's my voice, so I got to give it to him. <laughs> I feel you, Miss Up. <laughs> so, hey, so uh, see, oh, go ahead, man. My bad. I was going to ask him about the bowl participations. Like, how many bowl games did he go to? I played in. I played in all four. Um, it wasn't a national championship, so like the Gator Bowl is the biggest one I've been to. Um, but it was all. It was all fun. Like, it was just another game for me. So. The more games, the better for me. I just love to play. Cool. Who, who y'all play against in that bowl game? Who was that? Uh, Nebraska. We played against oh. Nebraska. Oh, and that wow. was the welcoming of the oh, uh, Big Sue. Sue okay. had a field day. I think he got drafted, like, number one overall against us. So, <laughs> so <know>. yeah. <laughs> Man, it's a character. He got him a Super Bowl this year. So, he finally got it. But, um, uh, so yeah, you yeah, uh, went, yeah. To, finally, went to all the <laughs> for real. You went to all the bowl games, and uh, yeah, senior year you had six interceptions, correct? Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, did you did you go to the senior bowl? Yep, played in the senior bowl. Um, that was a fun game. It's a little different, but fun. Um, it's nerve wracking just because you have. <laughs> Instead of college scouts, now it's NFL scouts, and they break down everything. Um, <laughs> after practice, you might be walking back, and you might have somebody to pull you to the side. So it was like a, it was twenty four seven. It was nonstop uh, with the senior bowl. It was, but it was it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Um, I got to meet a lot of players before we got to the league, um, and made friendships, bonds. You kind of meet scouts, so everybody faces started becoming familiar to you. By time, uh, by time you get to different organizations. Okay, so so you got so you got drafted in the fifth round to the Cowboys, man. So yep. so how was that? Oh, man, it was a dream come true. Um, going into it, it was like, oh, you going second round? Uh, didn't get a call to the fifth. By time the end of the third, I was like, you know what? I just lay down, took a nap, uh, and my mom's actually answered my phone. And she handed it to me, and she was already screaming and stuff before I can even process what was really going. <laughs> before I could process what was going on, uh, and I talked. I talked into existence. Like the night before, I was like, 
I think I went out or something. I was like, you know what? My friend was like, oh, you going to Dallas? So he told like a bouncer. Oh, he played for the Cowboys. Blase, blase. And this is before I even got drafted. Luckily, oh, I got that man. call, so it wasn't a lot. <laughs> it wasn't a lot. What? That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. Manifestation. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, so uh, talk much. about, you know, the yes, combine. Sir. I mean, talk about the experience working out in the combine. I know it was tough. A lot of people said that, uh, you know, they didn't like it. You know, um, it was a lot of, you know, judging and stuff going on. Just talk about, <laughs> you know, the nitpicking and the, and the subtleties that goes on in the draft. Man, it's a, to me, I break it down as like a, a meat market just because once yeah. you go in, uh, so you, you, only thing you got on, you had on, you don't have on no clothes, you have on your girdle basically. So you walk yep. in and it's team, it's the owners, it's scouts, it's coaches, and they all sitting in this one room um, and they have a walk with you. So you basically walk, walk through them, walk on the podium. And they do your weight, your height, your weight, uh, your wingspan, and all that right there. And you just have everybody sitting there just looking at you, like writing everything down. So it's it, it's it's kind of weird, but it's a different experience. I like I I, I wouldn't take it back. Um, you just got to be mentally ready for it. If you're not, then it's gonna throw you for a loop. You're gonna be lost um, because it's always something like your phone is steady ringing. Uh, you might get back to your room and somebody might call you, like Dallas might call you, uh, come down to the lobby, I need to meet you. So during that meeting, they might be talking about uh, different plays. I, like I had coordinators come to me and break down plays and then make me teach that play. They just broke down back to them just to see how smart I was and if I can oh. function or if I can teach things back to them. I've had teams come to me Ask me like if tight end blocking, what is this? Different different uh formations. Like it's just a variety. Everybody look for different things. I ha I have the Browns come to me and tell me what would be my ideal rookie season, which was weird. So I'm Whoa. telling them stuff and it was like, no, nah, tell me something different. Yeah. Tell me something different. So I'm like, Yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. You walk in the room <laughs> and it's a camera in your face with Jerry Jones here, you got Wade Phillips here, and they just asking you questions while somebody's sitting there recording. So it's a different experience. It's just something you got to be ready for. Yeah, man, for real. So, hey, how was it playing with Dez Bryant? You know, watching him in practice in the games? Like, was Woo! Dez was an animal. <laughs> um, Dez was different. So when Dez came in, Dez was Dez. Like, Dez did yeah. what Dez wanted to do. He didn't <laughs> want nobody taking advantage of him. Got, like, uh, a crazy story about Dez is, uh, <laughs> So we always have Ricky dinners. So your rookie year, you got to take basically the whole team out. So my rookie year, it was like five of us on defense. So we had to take the whole defense out to the fanciest restaurant and they order whatever it is they want. So I've never <laughs> had, uh, what was it? Like probably like $20,000 meal. Dang. They ran the tab up to $20,000 wow. for a, like, a meal. Steaks, wine, that's about it. They just start ordering crazy stuff. And uh, so what Dez did was they, I think it was at practice one day, and Roy Williams wanted Dez to carry his helmet off the field, but he didn't do it. So Roy got mad. So when he had his rookie dinner, Roy and the offense ran the tab up to like 40-something thousand dollars. Kid you not, 40-something thousand dollars. So he paid that. Like Dez pays that, goes out the next day and buys a Bentley. Just because. Okay. <laughs> okay, man. Yes. That's so that's this. Like, no, nah, that's not going. I do what okay. I want. Like that, 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 that don't bother me. It's not going to face me. <laughs> do it, Dez. Yeah. That's like He's a great guy. He worked hard too. He worked hard. Yeah. Yeah. Dez, I can see that. Dez is yeah. a stand-up guy. Like I like this. So. How was it like playing with um uh in practice against Tony Romo on the other side of the field? Ooh, Romo, Romo was pretty good. Uh, Romo was kind of, if Romo rock with you, Romo rock with you. If he don't, like, really deal with you like that, then he's not going to really say too much to you. So he talked more so to the offensive guys than he did the defensive guys. But if you made a play yeah. against him or, he, or you did something that he liked, he would. He, he would be talking to him. Yeah, I like that. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So my first pick, he said something to me, so I was like, I'm moving up oh. a little bit. <laughs> I'm moving up. <laughs> 
That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Who, who was the other DB that you looked up to when you got to the Cowboys? Was it Terrence Newman? Uh, Orlando Scandrick? Which one was it? It was, it was more so, it was Drill Since the Ball and uh, Mike Jenkins. Um, yeah. Ken kind of took me in, but Drill basically showed me the ropes. So everything that Drill knew, Drill taught me. Like, Drill basically took me on his wings uh, with every little thing. Um, even when I left Dallas to go to, to Jacksonville, like, he came from Jacksonville to come to Dallas. So he was telling me, okay, well, listen, little bro, this is what you got to do. Like, this is, this is their defense. This is how they run things. Which is different because coming from Dallas, from America's team to the Jaguars, I can't. I don't want to say it's a step down, but it's not the Cowboys. Like it's not too many teams in the league like the Cowboys. You can go anywhere, and they they could tell you everything about yourself. You get paid for doing stuff that you normally do on a regular basis. You go to Vegas for free. Like it's just crazy. It's just perks that come along with being the Cowboys. And then going to the Jaguars is like okay, well. Now I gotta train my mindset different. Like it's this right here is a different vibe. This is not this is not being in Dallas. So I had to find like new friends. I had to I had to see how they move around and things like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I got I got a. But Sense uh, wise, that got me. Like Joel Sense wise, still. Word. Well, I got a clip of your preseason game uh, against the Raiders, the first uh, preseason game, two thousand nine. Okay. So I got a little highlight of that. Let's check that out real quick. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I tell you, I'm the arcade. I'm the arcade king, bro. I'm trying to tell you, I don't let up. Oh, yeah. Oakland Raiders against the Dallas Cowboys. The Raiders excited to debut Darius Hayward Bay and uh, Lewis Murphy, the young wide receiver. Is the tail of the eye. Romo's going to throw on first down. Ball deflected by Greg Ellis, the former Cowboy, and that to the ground on the goal line. Greg Ellis coming through from his left defensive end spot got in. Here's Romo Nabi Asamoah, by the way, has left the game. Stanford Ralph playing at right corner. They fake the handoff to Jones. Romo looking left and a lob one out there. Caught by Roy Williams for a Dallas first down. Covered by Stanford Ralph. He is out on a Raider 44-yard line. Miles Austin now comes in along with uh, Patrick Creighton. Roy Williams, they gave up a lot to get him from Detroit. Big hole for Felix Jones. He pops outside left. I am Eugene going to shove him out. But Felix Jones, not only is he lightning and fast, but tremendous size. He goes 220 pounds, and he can really burn. That's a 14-yard pickup. Kirk Morrison shows blitz. Michael Huff shows blitz. They don't come. They rush three and drop eight. Romo confused. Now going to rush out left throw. It is caught for a touchdown by Jason Witten. He just used his size, the big tight end there, to take it away from Stanford Rock. As the Cowboys do get in, and he is a tremendous tight end. He's second and 21, and off to McFadden, his first touch of the game, a big hole off the right side, and across the 20 goes McFadden. The Raiders run one pick from the 08 draft, that would be a 13-yard pickup. So a sack on first down does not deter the Raiders on this uh, drive. Here comes the Cowboy blitz, again, walled off, rushing to the run across the line, 40, breaks a tackle, and down to the territory, it's taken out by the 40-40. It has been a difficult offseason for the Raider franchise as Grabkowski hands off to McFadden coming left. He breaks off. Hawkins able to miss that tackle there. Raiders open the 2009 year, September the 14th, and a Monday nighter against Sean Merriman and the Chargers. Russell yielding to Gretkowski. It throws for a touchdown. Little play action there. Tony Stewart the wide open in the back of the end zone. Beautifully done there by Bruce Gretkowski. And the Washington Redskins will be coming to open a great home schedule this year. Second and seven, getting a straight drop. Going to throw a deep ball down the right sideline, and it is working out. Michael Huff took it away. An interception there by Michael Huff. What a play he made. Great play. As Brandon Myers, a rookie tight end going in motion. A play action by Gretkowski. A blitz picked up. Throw off. And a catch by Murphy. What a nice hands catch that was. Out to midfield. It's a handoff. Rankin coming left. Stops in the hole. Gets wide. Cuts back in and goes into the end zone. Touchdown. Hooray!
Raiders. Here first and 10, Raiders on the Cowboy 49. Play action, Gregkowski going deep ball down the middle for Nick Miller. He dropped it, I believe, into the hole. He, he caught it. He caught it on the one-yard line. He bobbled the ball, and before it hit the ground, he was able to pull it in. What a catch there on the deflection by Nick Miller. Myers goes in motion again at right wing. Hand off Russell. Same play. This time he's in. Touchdown, Raiders. Fully Reed back in to return this punt from uh, Ricky Schmidt. Reed a fair catch. She will take it and funnel it. And the Raiders should have it on the 10-yard line. Really, Reed let that ball get into his body off the shoulder pads. The Raiders recover. Marshall, the new defensive coordinator, and told her the passing game coordinator. They're going to call a fade route here for Franklin. Touchdown, Raiders. Beautifully thrown by Charlie Fry. Overall, a good Raider performance as the Raiders soundly beat the Dallas Cowboys tonight by a score of a 31 to 10. Yes, sir. <laughs> Had to take you back in memory lane a little bit. I know it was dirty. I know, it, I know it wasn't easy. I know it wasn't easy, but yeah. hey, you got it done. You know, uh, talk about your first game, put on a cowboy uniform. I know you had the jitters, you sweating, playing under the big lights with the biggest uh, team in America. Hey, McFadden, too. He had to go against McFadden. Boy. Hey, that's yeah, exactly. against McFadden. Laying the wood. That's oh, a- man, it was, a, it was a dream come true, man. That was a dream come true. Uh, I had the jitters because it's, I guess it's different coming from high school to college, from college to Lee, because in college, you watch NFL, like you watch NFL all your life. Like, and yeah, you just that's see right. like different names and to just be on the same field with them, it's just it's mind blowing. And then after yeah. a while it kinda it kind of keeps saying, like after you make a plays, you be like, okay, well, they just like me. But before that, it's like I was starstruck. <laughs> For real? Jay, I was yeah, starstruck. Yeah. AJ, I was starstruck. For real? Yeah, Dang. man. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, like, who's the, who's the player? I was just like Oh yeah, T.O. Michael Vick was that guy. Yeah, Michael Vick was that guy. Like I was on uh, the table, I was like, "This can't be real." Like I'm not in pregame. I'm not stretching. I'm not doing anything. I'm just like, "This is Michael Vick." <laughs> <laughs> so, so Levon Kirkwood was talking about when Vick ran past him and Zoom passed. He said, "Oh no, it's time for me to leave." Oh, he said man. he just saw like a flash. And that was it. He said they got four two quarterbacks coming in the league now. He said, I'm yeah. done. Yeah, man. Yeah, Michael Vick was different. Um, I played against Vick when he came, when he got out of jail. So Ooh. I played against the new and improved Vick. <laughs> I played against yeah. Yeah, he revitalized himself for a couple of years. Oh you know? my goodness! Yeah. So like, then he, he had Deshaun Jackson. He was that one guy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, how was yeah. it and facing Deshaun, was, Deshaun Jackson? Was probably faster than him. Exactly. Man, I was scared. <laughs> yeah. Man, he got <laughs> For real, he got jets. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. A, player, he got a, real player jets. Like a player like him, you just yeah. gotta get him in line if you can, you know. Don't let him get exactly. started. Oh, you yeah. Right, you gotta jam yeah. him. You better jam yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. But they put him they put him in the slide against you. You can't do nothing. You just yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You yeah. can't get no on. That's what they that's why they do that. What is he gonna do? Yeah, get a mismatch with a linebacker or something or safety. Yeah, that's what okay. they're trying you know, to do. He's, he's got to backpedal and stay on top of him. Just keep backpedaling, baby. <laughs> you got to turn and run. You got to turn yeah, and run. Turn and run. Turn and run. <laughs> trying to stay on top of the route tree. Yeah. Trying to stay on top of the route tree. That's all. So yeah, exactly. uh, you played in a tough division, man. Exactly. Talk about playing the NFC East your first year. You got Washington, Giants, and uh, the Eagles, all of your, your conference. You played against Eli, you know, uh, Donovan McNabb, Mike Vick. Talk about that, man. Oh uh, man, it was fun. Uh, that division, uh, everybody's your rival. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize is. Yep, right. <laughs> anytime you play them, it's a rival game for you. And uh, like the quarterbacks that I went against, they were in the league forever. Like they were at the top of their game, they were the best of the best. So you kind of just you learn a lot by sitting back watching them, um, learning, just listening to different play calls, how they how they basically move around, how they control the team. And you kind of, like me, I try to use it as to how I play my game because I compare myself to a quarterback on defense. 
So when they're making their checks, I got to make my checks. I got to make my calls. I got to know how to move around. I got to, I'm trying to figure out what they're looking at. So it's, uh, I guess it was a learning experience for me. And it was, it was a fun experience. It was fun because a lot of people can't say they play against some guys. Uh, those guys were the guys that I grew up watching. So it's kind yep. of fun to watch them and then play against them. That's, that's amazing, yeah. man. That's amazing. Yeah, it so, is. It is. After you left Jacksonville, did you get the chance to play with uh, Peyton Manning in Indianapolis before he left and went to Denver? He was hurt. Yeah, oh, so, was so Peyton injury was hurt. Season. Um, yeah, that was the neck injury season. He actually he uh he basically coached. So it, it was it was the weirdest thing. Well, I can't remember the quarterback at the time, but during practice, the quarterback it coach was, sitting uh, back the to quarterback for a while. He was the enjoying Patriots. life at the moment. Yeah. And yeah, so so and Peyton was just doing all the coaching. He's doing everything, he's telling him how to do the chase, telling him this, that. So I'm like, wow. And the quarterback was just like, go ahead, Peyton. Yeah, do what he says. <laughs> <laughs> so he's really a coach and a football body, to be honest, yeah. right? Yeah, player coach. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Have you ever Definitely. played with a quarterback that had that much control and knew how to audible and shift players around just doing the lineup and the sets before the play clock every time? Uh closest one to it would be Romo. Uh, okay, Romo, yeah, Conner, Romo was Romo Conner in the show, yeah, yeah. He basically he pretty much ran the show. Um, but for me, it was easy because I went to Romo every day, so I kind of knew his. I already knew his his checks. So when he checked the certain things or say certain stuff, I already kind of know what it means. So I'm like, okay, well, you can't yeah, get me yeah. no more. <laughs> but going to get somebody else, it's just different, man. It's different. Uh, like Peyton, Peyton probably was the master at checking. I Omaha, that. yeah, I hear that. Omaha. I still hear that to this day. Like he was, yeah, that's, that's he a problem. Was <laughs> exactly. Omaha, Omaha. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what was it like playing in uh the red, playing with the Redskins? Who was the quarterback Redskins, then? Yeah. Was it um, oh, RG three? Nah, it was it was right before him. It was before RG. Um, who could have been the quarterback? It? It wasn't uh, Cousins because it was after. Was it Kurt? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Oh, I can't remember who it was. But it was oh, weird. Rick, that was Rick Grossman? Rival. Rick Grossman? It could have been Grossman. It could have been Grossman. Number eight. But it was just weird. Like, the whole vibe was different because I'm like, yeah, that's what it was. So I'm like, uh. Right after McNabb. All of my rivals. Like, I'm not supposed to be in here with y'all. Yeah. I'm yeah. not supposed to be here with y'all. This is <laughs> so yeah. Talk, talk oh, about that weird. being in the, both rival locker rooms, Dallas and Washington. That's kind of be kind of weird, man. Like oh man, yeah, it, was, it, it was different. It was different because I went from I went from hating them to <laughs> getting paid by them. So I'm like, okay, well let me try, let me try and get this adjustment right. But it was it was different. But it's all love. Like, everybody everybody had, had the same agenda. Um, everybody respect everybody um, as a player. And as a man, so it was. You just kind of look at it from that from that point of view. Um, it's like going it's really not about loving or hating yeah. certain teams. It's just about doing your job, basically. Yeah, At the end of the right. day, you get in that position, yeah. you take advantage of every opportunity, and do your job. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. What is the big le- What is the biggest lesson that football has taught you in life? Ah. <sighs> The biggest lesson is, I would say accountability. Um, you got to be accountable for doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, because you will get exposed if you don't. As <laughs> yeah. much as people say you can cut corners and you don't got to do this, you don't got to do that, you will get exposed for not doing it. That's right. So you got to be accountable. My biggest yeah. lesson. Yeah. Uh, what, year, what year was your last season in the NFL, Mike? Uh, Twelve. 12, yeah. 2012. And then uh, what type of work did you do after the NFL? So what's crazy is uh, right when I left, well, I just I just up and left because I talked to Jeff Davis, the legend of Clemson, the judge. That's so me, me and him was talking one day. Yeah, so me and him was talking one day, and he was like, uh, 
like, what are your life plans or whatever? So I was like, I want to get into coaching, like, eventually, um, but I'm not sure when. So he was like, I think, I think what you really need to do is, like, he said, if you keep playing football, you might have, what, one, two more years left, you know what I'm saying, uh, according to, uh, like, the skill. Like, you know you don't stay in the NFL for long. It's not for long. So, like, if you play, you might play one or two more years. So he said, what I want you to do is I want you to go go sit down and have a conversation with Dabo. Just go talk to Dabo and let him know, like, what it is you're trying to do. And hopefully he can help you. So I go and talk to Dabo. And he was like, uh, he said, well, I have a GA position that could be coming open soon if somebody gets a job. And he was like, but if I give you this, then I'm going to need for you to be serious about not going back to play. So I was like, you know what, I'm done. Like, if you give me that job, I'm committed yeah. to coaching. That's right. I just walk away from it. Because I already had head injuries. I already broke my wrist. So I'm just like, you know what? Yeah. Let me just, okay. let me focus on me. I got to start thinking long term. I can't keep thinking short term. Yeah, that's so, right. Um, I ended up getting a, a GA job with Clemson. Uh, so I did that for two years. I, I got a call from Rex Ryan after my second year. All right. I went up to the Bills. So I went to coach for the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo is the cool. coldest place I've ever been. <laughs> ever. Oh, my God. <laughs> Goodness. I know it's Love right up there with Brandon Bay, though. <laughs> real, man. man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I did that. Uh, um, I did that. I was the quality control uh, special teams coach there. I All did right. that for a year. And then I, uh, I came back to my hometown and helped out coaching at Wilson for four years. It's a local high school right here in Florence. So I did that for four years. Yep. And now All I'm right. a realtor in Florence. So That's anybody want to buy a house? Up. I'm your guy. Hey, yeah. how about your boy, man? Telling yeah. you. <laughs> so they, they <laughs> just recently, right. not too long ago, retired your jersey at Lamar High School, correct? Mm -hmm. They retired it, uh, well, a few years now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So Congrats talk about that. Yeah, congratulations. Talk about that Appreciate experience it. with your with the former, uh, you know, teammates and uh, people that came to your ceremony. Ah oh, man, it was it was a fun time. Uh, coming through, watching uh, John and Levine get their jersey retired, and a yeah. few other guys, and you just sit there and be like, "Dang, I wish I can get mine retired one day." And to get the call from Coach Boy, and was like, "Listen, uh, we're gonna retire your jersey this year." It makes me feel good. Five is my lucky number, and I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. Five is five is my high school number. Hey, this is my sister in law, Millie. What's up, Millie? Hey, but yeah, five is doing? five is my uh five is my number. And everything kind of adds up to five. So I'm kind of so eleven twenty one is what? Is our one, one, two one is <laughs> yeah, and it equals five. Hey, hey man, one plus one, plus two plus one is five. Right. I got drafted in the fifth round. In my the fifth round. Tied number five. That's what I'm saying. So it's like hey, man, five is that number for me. Yes, yeah, sir. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Say, so, 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 so look, that's that's one of the safe. That, that's my that's my baby brother right there. Baby okay, brother, that's, right. That's, that's, brother. That's, that's, that's my baby brother right there. What's yeah. going yeah, on? Yeah, he bro. plays safety okay. and and receive at state. So yeah. Okay, oh. that's it. Yeah, we'd love to have him on the show as well. You mm -hmm. know, show that bro love. Yeah, definitely. Well, he got oh, yeah, to be the second set of brothers definitely. that came on the show. Uh, Marcus Williams said, "What up? Look at all the fam pulling up." Marcus, what's, what what's up, man? That's my little brother. Everybody's just getting off. That's still my little brother. Uh, uh, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, talk yeah. about um the uh talk about the uh experience coming back to Lamar after playing in NFL. You know the community outreach, the kids. How do they take towards you, knowing that a person came from where they came from and came back to them, and and also giving out. Yeah. Oh. It, it it was always love. It was always love um, because every chance I got, I always came back home just to do like free camps and uh, things of that nature. And my brother actually coached there at Lamar when I used to come back. So it was always okay. good to come back and basically support him with what he had going on and basically to, basically to give back to them. Like it, it was all I know when I came through, it was always good for me to see like certain people who made it and 
it, it like it meant a lot to me. So my thing what was to basically give them what I had. E, what it do? What's up, E? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, what is your message to a uh, young kid right now? <laughs> Big bro. Uh, you know, going to uh, college, trying to figure out what school to go to. Um, what is your message to that student athlete? Man, just follow your heart. Just follow your heart. Uh, do the little things because at that point, like what, what, what a lot of kids don't realize is you might be the man or that guy at your school. But once you get to the next level, it's a hundred of you. Like you're not the guy on the team. Or like you got to grind and put the same work that you did uh, before you got to where you was at. And Kobe D, this guy here, yeah, he's the next one. That's my little oh, brother okay. too. Like he's a, he's <laughs> he's actually a corner uh, at South Carolina State right now. Oh yeah, that's he, him, the star. He's yeah, right now. so he, yeah, that's the star right on, now. Bro? That's him. Yeah. yeah. So uh, right yeah. now, how do people can actually reach out and find you? They want to buy a house, you know. Get let everybody know your your social media platforms. And oh how you can reach you. man. <laughs> Homes by Hamlet is my face is my business account on Facebook. Uh, everything else you want to find me on is Michael Hamlin on uh, my regular page on Facebook. My Instagram is Hamlin twenty five. All right, man. Those are my platforms. If you need me, just feel free to holler at me. No problem, no problem. And then, would you like to send any shout outs to anybody out there watching? Any former teammates, coaches, teachers, or <laughs> you know, professors or whatever. Fans, yeah, let, let the people know for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the family. That's the family right there. I appreciate y'all. No yeah. problem. Huh? Any shout outs you got? Uh, I think Mike. my wife is on. She, I hear you in the background. <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard it say me now. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, is on. Yeah. Me, hey, me, shout me out. Okay, hey, hey y'all want to be on the couch? Let me tell you about the wife. What's up, what's up, bird, man? Everybody in the building, I appreciate y'all. So my wife, she's a, uh, she's, she's a tattoo artist. She does lashes. She does brows. She does anything you need done. Yeah. So That's what I'm talking about. Too, man. Drop her That's my middle brother right there. Marquis is my middle brother. Marquis, right. what's yeah, going on, Marquis? What's up, right what's so I got, I got all my brothers in the building. <laughs> Yeah, so there's no two safeties that the two safeties that state right now. Yeah. Hey, tell them don't forget to shop at uh, oh, yeah, um, our apparel, apparel store <laughs> on Facebook. You know, we got a lot of merchandise. I told them to come oh, on and they got these shots because a lot of them don't like the cowboys. They I don't know what fans they are, but they was going hard <laughs> on you earlier in the day. Oh, so you look, know what I'm my baby brother, he's he's a he's a daggone, he's a giant fan. Taylor Tats, everybody go follow Taylor Tats. That's the wife. All right. Okay. You the oldest, but you still a little bro, Marcus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, man, up, we man. we appreciate Thank you coming so on the brother. show, man. For real, it was yeah, a Mo pleasure. Man. We got people coming in man, crazy right now. I can't even keep up. I, I can't even keep up with the comments. They say forty yeah, nine is They got a lot of love for you, baby. They got a lot of love now. Hey, so you yeah, gotta man, keep on doing you know what I'm saying? Let's keep going up. Hey, bro, you already know you little bro. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Coleman said Vikings all day. Come on, easy breezy. You know. <laughs> your brother, your, your on, brother man. said G-Man all day. Yeah, man. He a giant fan. He don't know no better. Oh, man. He said, what's the, <laughs> what's the score again? I guess that's what he's trying to say. Nah, nah, he, nah he, he, he's trying to figure out your uh. Oh, okay. Shop um, page. It's it's Bonfire. If you go on oh, the store. Sports Shop okay. page on Facebook, you just hit the shop now button and it'll take you right to the link. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. So Mike yeah, loves his wife. I love you. Hey, you know it. All right, man. Well, we appreciate <laughs> you coming on the show, man. Uh, we'd love to have yeah, you man. back on. We can talk about a particular subject yeah. if you want. Anytime, you know, brother. Anytime. Shout out to all your family members and friends that have been tuning in. Y'all don't forget to shout with us and follow us on YouTube. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate Spotify it. and Deezer. And um, until the next yeah. time, you guys. You be safe out there, wear your mask. Yeah, and it's not how you start, it's how you work, KJ. Hey, you know what it is. It's how you finish, man. Yeah. That's it, man. And hey, we appreciate our special guest, Michael Hamlin. Until next time. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Great yeah. show. Peace. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it.